Today, the House Ad Hoc Committee on the Bangsam Order, chaired by Congressman Rufus Rodriguez, approved the draft Bangsam Order Basic Law with a vote of 50 in favor, 17 against, and one abstention. 95 revisions were done to include a deletion, deletion of three provisions to ensure the draft law is compliant with the Constitution. It's a major breakthrough to ensure the President's commitment to win the peace in the proposed Bangsamoro or Bangsa Autonomous Region. Joining us tonight here is Professor Miriam Coronel Ferrer, the government's chief negotiator for the peace talks with the MILF. Good evening, ma'am, and welcome to News Life. Good evening, Kathy. Ma'am, what was your initial reaction when the results were in? Well, of course, we were happy that finally mm -hmm. the, uh, the work of the ad hoc committee has, uh, uh, has been completed. You know, they really exerted a lot of effort to see through uh, the process. Uh, I think they had more than 40 hearings, mm -hmm. almost 50 in fact, and uh, they went through four different drafts mm -hmm. until finally... I want provision per provision. They mm -hmm. got to that kind of uh, a settlement of mm -hmm. uh, of uh, a final form that mm -hmm. will be elevated to the plenary. So uh, we're very thankful that the House really exerted the maximum effort mm -hmm. to uh, to fast track the process. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the basic. There were some changes in some titles. For example, it, the law has been changed to mm -hmm. the basic law of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region and the Bangsamoro entity now to Bangsa Autonomous Region. What was your reaction on this? Well, the stipulates the creation of autonomous region in mm -hmm. that part of Mindanao. So that is basically uh, in accordance with the Constitution. But Bangsamoro, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, I think uh, what's important is Bangsamoro remains as the, uh, the name by which it will be known. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, it has a very, that's a very symbolic thing that has been achieved in this process, that mm -hmm. kind of uh, a legitimation of uh, uh, a name by which uh, the people there have uh, associated themselves with. Mm -hmm. Now the removal on the Wali as the titular head of the Bang Samoro, Congressman Rufus Rodriguez pushed for the deletion to ensure concerns of a sub-state is addressed. Do you accept the move of the committee for this? You know, it's not for me to accept it or not. I trust their wisdom. They mm -hmm. had some questions about uh, uh, the constitutionality of having some kind of uh, titular head. Mm -hmm. But, of course, I'm also trying to understand it from the perspective of those who propose that, and that is none other than the Bangsamoro Transition Commission. Mm -hmm. The Wali large ceremonial functions, but there are critical moments, for instance, when the uh, chief minister is being removed mm -hmm. and the Wali performs some kind of uh, a process that will see through the mm -hmm. Uh, selection of the next chief minister. Mm -hmm. So some adjustments might have to be made there when, mm -hmm. uh, if that, uh, that function is no longer going to be played by the Wali. Mm -hmm. And as yeah. earlier mentioned, there were 17 who voted against the passage and one who abstained from voting. And one of their concerns is the opt-in uh, option mm -hmm. for, for the expansion um, Congressman uh, Lobrigat from Zamboanga said that during their consultation with the people that they're not interested to be part of the entity. Um, what do you think is the general um, feeling of the people towards this? No, I think they already did some modifications mm -hmm. in the provision. Uh, uh, they made, uh, I think what the law limits now is mm -hmm. who could opt in uh, okay. before the creation of the Bangsamoro because mm -hmm. they already got restricted that to only cities and provinces. So mm -hmm. that already takes away barangays being able to opt in. All right. And ma'am, are you happy with the revisions in addressing concerns of offices created for the Bangsamoro which could impinge on the powers of several constitutional bodies to include civil service, audit, COMELEC, human rights, and the Office of the Ombudsman. We've always said that they don't impinge on mm -hmm. these constitutional bodies because uh, they will continue to exercise their powers. Obviously, there is only one COMELEC who could administer the elections, but the COMELEC in the Bangsamoro will be very special because it is only in that part of the country where you have regional elections. Everywhere, mm -hmm. er, everywhere have local and national. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a special body of the COMELEC and mm -hmm. that's what has been written in the draft from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. The COA is still the COA but it doesn't stop the uh, 
Bangsamoro government from putting up internal auditing offices. So mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think that uh, not, uh, anything was taken away there. It was, mm -hmm. it was perhaps clarified that as, that is exactly the case. That mm -hmm. nothing is taken away from mm -hmm. the constitutional bodies. Mm -hmm. And ma'am, the committee retained the provisions on the creation of a Bangsamoro Command for the AFP. However, coordination protocols, will this be good for security and defense of the Bangsamoro? You know, whether you put it there or not, mm -hmm. some coordination always happens unless mm -hmm. we're under martial law and the military can barge in any time mm -hmm. without, uh, without uh, any notice uh, bef uh, to for, uh, advance to the local government. But, you know, you, as I said, you don't really need to put, the, put mm -hmm. it there. There are protocols that are observed between the Armed Forces of the Philippines and local mm -hmm. governments, including, of course, the regional government. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, in general, do you have any concerns that you think were not included in this version mm -hmm. of well, of, uh, I think uh, what is very important are the key features that mm -hmm. have been retained by this bill. And what are these? One is num uh, the structure of government. Mm -hmm. It will be parliamentary, yes. and that has been upheld. In fact, that was probably not very controversial mm -hmm. at the level of the House. Um, second is the uh, fiscal autonomy. Mm -hmm. A lot of the provisions on uh, fiscal matters and also on social and economic matters have been retained. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the provision, more provisions were added to enhance uh, the protection of indigenous peoples and mm -hmm. of women mm -hmm. as well. That's some kind of for mm -hmm. us, no? mm -hmm. who are, of course, very much concerned that women's rights will be protected in the Bangsamoro. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, there were some uh, cutbacks mm -hmm. on the jurisdiction over uh, aspects of the exploration, development, and utilization of natural resources. But as far as the wealth sharing arrangements are concerned, they have been retained. Mm -hmm. So the Bangsamoro will enjoy a good share still uh, mm -hmm. on uh, revenues, government revenues that are generated from uh, mm -hmm. natural resources. And ma'am, now after hurdling the house level, we're targeting a specific deadline. Do you think mm -hmm. it will still be feasible for this law to be passed? Very, very soon. Well, you have the house, and the ha house is really working double time. Mm -hmm. And as I said, we really appreciate uh, the effort of the members of the ad hoc committee and the House leadership. It, the Senate will have to step up mm -hmm. because so far what we know of the Senate schedule is that they only have one public hearing uh, scheduled on Monday. Mm -hmm. But after that, we don't really know the timeline that is going to be followed. So we're, we're hoping that uh, the committee, especially the committee, government in the Senate led by Senator Marcos will mm -hmm. be able also to sort of give us a better sense of uh, the timeline that he's working on. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, with the passage of the BBL in the House committee level, what sense of um, uh, uh, what sense do you think does this give to the people of the Bangsamoro in terms of achieving peace and, in Mindanao? For those who really want this badly, especially mm -hmm. the people in the Bangsamoro, I think the uh, the surveys bear that out. For mm -hmm. the people who will be directly concerned with this Bangsamoro, they really want this. Mm -hmm. uh, majority want this. And that kind of uh, development in the House is very, very positive. It means that uh, they shouldn't lose hope, mm -hmm. that this process stands a chance. Uh, if we stay the course, if we, uh, uh, you know, we all contribute to this process, we will be able to uh, move, move our roadmap. Because, mm -hmm. you know, our roadmap uh, has many elements. It's not only the passage of the law. There are so ma many other elements that we need to put in place. The mm -hmm. decommissioning of the weapons and combatants yes. of the MILF, mm -hmm. the socioeconomic programs, transitional justice and reconciliation programs. So mm -hmm. all of them are important to ensure that we have a good foundation mm -hmm. for peace and development in the Bangsamoro, in Mindanao, and the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. All right, ma'am, on that note, thank you very much, Professor Miriam Coronel Ferrer, the government's chief negotiator for the peace talks with the MILF.